Hi guys! It has been a while since I made a sit down video where I just talk about a specific topic and I had a different video in mind today but that was way too much work to make uh, in the time that I had because I have been feeling a little bit sick uh, for a week now. Um, as you can hear from my voice it's not super <laughs> But I'm doing a little bit better, I just didn't have the time to film the long video. So instead, I thought I would talk about one of the topics that I have written on the list for a very long time. Um, questions that I get asked often, I always write down. And um, my take on socialization often comes up, or um, I often talk about it with friends. And I thought, uh, let's talk about it today. It is quite a controversial subject, I know that, and I would definitely invite you to start a discussion in the comments. Keep it civil, but uh, yeah, I would like to know what your take is on this entire thing. So today I would like to explain why I don't let my dogs say hi to everyone and everything. Now my main reason why my dogs are not allowed to greet everyone uh, is the same reason why other people usually do let their dog greet everyone, and that is socialization. To many people, socialization equals letting their dog interact with as many stimuli as possible, um, and that will result in social behavior no matter what. That's kind of the, the frame of thought that most people keep. To me, socialization does mean that the dog has to see the stimuli, but it doesn't mean that every single thing it encounters, the dog has to interact with. I'd rather my dog learn that most things it sees, it can ignore. Now, here's a little thing. My dogs are not taught or expected to ignore everything. I have terriers, I have sporting dogs. I do not expect for them to ignore small critters that run away from close beside them. Um, it's something that I need in the sport, but it's also something I think is too difficult for them to ignore. Um, so when it comes to that, I just keep the leash tight and I hope for the behavior to die down quickly. And as, as they age, uh, they will realize that if they're leashed, there's no reason or way to keep chasing. So the behavior will die down very quickly. Um, unless you, of course, encourage it. Uh, so that's uh, one of the things I don't ask my dogs to ignore because if I were to, it could have an effect on their performance in the sport, but also it could make the sport less fun for them. I try to keep a little bit of that, that terrier mindset in mind when we train. Uh, I don't expect the most extreme uh, behavior uh, from them. That being said, I do want them to ignore dogs and people, things you encounter when walking any street, uh, be it in the city or in the countryside, you will encounter some people and some dogs often. So what I think that happens when people let their dogs interact with other dogs, with children, with adults, is that it creates a certain expectation. And I am also creating a certain expectation, but it's very different. And most people expect their dogs to interact with a person and then walk with them. Um, and I know that for a fact there will be quite a few dogs who are fine being exposed to uh, exciting uh, situations for um, several times a day for years and they will still have focus on the owner no matter what even if the owner doesn't use food. But many dogs, especially like the Stafford, will become overexcited in such a situation. And since you don't have the situation fully under control because you never know what the other dog or the other person might do. Every single situation results in an expectation for the future for your dog. And though people often say their dog is friendly, to be honest, 99% of people don't really read a dog's body language, their stress signals. So even though the dog might not have done something in the past, it might do. And a dog doesn't have to bite in order to form a stressful stimulus for the other dog. Um, so, to me, the basis of socialization is um, very different from what the regular person would say. So to me, socialization means that I teach my dog that whatever it encounters, it doesn't have to act on it. It doesn't have to do anything with the dog, with the person that it sees. 
So how I go about it is when I have a puppy specifically, I try to avoid walking in the city. Mojo grew up in the city and I asked people who asked to pet her. If they asked, I said yes, that is fine, but tell her to sit and then you can pet her. And often people wouldn't understand what that meant or they just failed. Um, so again, situation uh, was not fully under control and that messed up my training. Um, and that was stupid. I should, should have just said no and it's all right to say no. And I didn't know that it was all right to say no. Um, so living in the city, every two seconds, people would either just come up to her or would ask if they could come up to her. And um, this has meant that when we moved out of the city, we realized that even if Mojo saw a person 100 meters away, she would get excited. She would stop, stare and wag her tail. And her ears would go up and she would whine a little bit. Um, she had a certain expectation and the expectation was so high, so important to her, so intense that even at a, yard, uh, a large distance, 100 meters is um, 100 yards approximately, uh, if you're from America, um, she would expect the person to approach and cuddle her or touch her or give her food or something like that. And that expectation is something that I try to avoid now in training and that I use, uh, that I spent years trying uh, to get off of her, get out of her. Right now she can walk on a marketplace full of people, but sometimes in the street when a person makes eye contact in a certain way, she will not be able to contain her excitement. And that's very annoying. And with Venus and Hunter, we don't have this issue because we did not let them interact with people. Now, for me, the main reason not to interact, uh, let my dogs interact with dogs is because of the predisposition to dog aggression. Um, I do not expect my dogs to be friendly with other dogs in the future because of their genetic makeup and because I just don't have interest in it. My dogs do not have to play with other dogs in order to be happy and they have one another. There are three in this house and they get to play all day long um, and within the household that is totally fine and it goes well but I don't want to instigate anything and I don't want to make anything worse than it already is. If my dog gets exci exciting expectations from other dogs that it sees on the street I have a higher expectation of that aggression being higher, be being heightened because of the higher excitement level. And it's something I don't want, I'm not interested in it. I don't want to make small talk with people. I don't want to let my dogs say hi to everything they encounter. I just want to walk. Now, one thing that you'll often hear when you say no, uh, if a person asks, then they either say, oh, but my dog is friendly, oh, but my dog just wants to say hi, um, and that is fine, but my dog doesn't, and I don't need your explanation for why you're asking, or I don't need you to convince me to let my dog interact with yours. I am just not interested. And to me, it should be more of a known thing that it is all right to say no, and that people respect the no. Um, and it's, it's a shame that there is always a, um, a negative factor about it, because every time I say no, or every time I ask people, would you please keep your dog close to you if it's off leash where it's not supposed to be, people often get defensive, and they should realize that there are so many reasons why you as a person, or you as a dog owner, might not want their dog or them to approach you I am not interested in having the interactions, but also I do not feel comfortable with other people or other dogs approaching me and my dog. I do not know what your dog is going to do. And even, even if it's off leash and you say that it will stay close to you, uh, you shouldn't be offended when I ask to leash it because I cannot smell or see or hear what your dog will do when we pass. I often pass dogs like Border Collies who are very fine staying in a heel, but as soon as you pass they circle around you and they sniff your dogs behind and that's something my dogs hate. Um, and things like that have happened to me quite often and I know that they have happened to other people so that is often the reason why people like us who don't want the interaction ask stuff um, prior to anything happening. 
And I think it's a, it's a shame that there's this stigma around it that people have to defend them, their reasoning for keeping their dogs on the leash, their reasoning for asking you if it's all right to meet. Um, when people ask, can I pet your dog, um, and I say no, they often respond saying, oh, but I didn't know you were training. And even though I might not be in a set up um, training where my dog is teaching certain commands, my dog is always learning. A child, a person, a dog, a cat, it is learning in every situation in life. Every single experience they can learn something from. And that doesn't mean necessarily that they're t learning a trick, they're gaining life experience. And if this person pets my dog whilst we are training, my dog's focus will shift from me and that is rewarded with a pet, with touching. And maybe sometimes the people even offer food. And the last thing as a dog owner that you want, as a re responsible dog owner, is for your dog to equally want focus from other people as they do from you. Um, it's just a recipe for disaster. Um, and no, I'm not training, but my dog is learning. And that's why I don't want you to distract her, ever. Especially when people say, and this is especially when people say, Hi doggy, no, make eye contact with the owner, ask. And sometimes people will say yes. I sometimes say yes, but oftentimes I say no. Now, I do sometimes say hi when people politely ask me and they don't interact with the dog prior to asking me um, for an interaction. Uh, for me, that's only uh, children and Venus so, so far is the only one that I do let interact with the children. She loves them, um, she doesn't pull towards them, but she gets such a um, thrill out of it and so do the, the children and the children can also learn that dogs are not necessarily scary. Um, so I do try to help people uh, in that scenario but I don't let strangers or neighbors or anyone touch my dogs. I don't let people feed my dogs. I don't let other people approach my dogs with others. If people do, I lift up my dogs and I will use my legs to keep the other dog away because every single interaction that is a little bit exciting or a little bit negative will influence what they will experience in the future and how they will behave in the future. We try to set our dogs up for success and that's the main focus here is wherever you are, try to set your dog up for success. Cross the street if you see a dog on a flexi leash uh, walking ahead of its owner or Put your dog on the opposite side of you so that you can form a barrier for whatever is there. And the younger the dog, the bigger the distance has to be. The more aggressive the dog, the more the distance has to be. You can always adjust the situation and it might be weird to other people, but you will make it so much easier for yourself in the, in the future. Um, Hunter right now, um, he um, can ignore people quite well. Um, he's 11 months at the moment and he hasn't had experiences with people in the street touching him. Um, and that is perfect because every time a person passes, he doesn't even look at them because they never do anything. But there are people who make intense eye contact and there are people who try to reach over and that is something I'm wary about. So when people um, will pass us quite closely, we put the dog on the opposite side so that the people can't reach over, so that there is kind of a social and physical barrier for people to reach over. He doesn't ignore dogs yet. If they're quiet, he does, but if they start barking, barking and whining, he gets incredibly excited. Um, even though we have never let him interact with dogs, he has been approached by three. Those three encounters did create a certain expectation. And even those three simple uh, encounters influenced the way he behaved because he was quiet always and after those um, experiences he, got, he started whining and um, getting very excited. Um, so that's a shame because we tried um, not to build any expectations and frustrations but it also shows how bad it could have been if we did let him interact with everyone and everything. Um, so yeah, and then one thing that people uh, ask me is, yeah, but are you not afraid that your dog will be aggressive towards people if you don't let it interact with them? Um, so use a little bit of a history on Staffordshire Bull Terrier. 
um, because these dogs were bred to fight, um, they were bred to for bear baiting and uh, bull baiting and they were also bred uh, to fight one another, um, something that couldn't ever happen was aggression, aggressive behavior towards a human because a human had to be able to hold a dog or pick it up in the midst of a fight. A redirected aggression was not accepted and this meant that not only the dogs would not be able to breed, they would be killed. Um, and this is quite severe and quite um, something that the modern peop modern um, culture doesn't understand. A breeding is that simple. If you um, exclude certain dogs from uh, from um, the breeding pool, over time you can exclude something or mainly exclude something. So the Stafford will always like people. The average Stafford, the average Stafford will not do any harm. If the dog, does, uh, if the person doesn't have bad intentions, um, so no, I'm not afraid that my dogs will become inherently aggressive. Um, on the contrary, they will guard. They are good guard dogs. Uh, Mojo isn't, but the other two are. Um, but they wouldn't attack a person if they are not used to being randomly touched by strangers. <laughs> um, Interacting with strangers and not, is not the way to go about um, teaching your dog that people are friendly. Um, rather, the thing I'm doing, I personally think, is my dogs are taught that people do not do stuff that they don't want. And I think that it all depends on the breed that you have. It all depends on your intentions. It all depends on what... Um, the dog's individual character is like. But if you have a dog as extreme as ours, and a dog that is predisposed to dog aggression, um, I would suggest trying not to interact with everyone. Trying to interact with no one, even. That is possible. It is possible. It is probably going to be difficult, but to me it's made such a difference in my dog's behavior, it's made such a difference in my dog's upbringing and it's been wonderful. And people always ask me, why is Hunter not downstairs? Why can't I see Hunter? Well, it's because you want to see him so badly and it's because there is a level of excitement that I don't want for him yet. We will slowly build that up and when he's older he will be downstairs with his visitors, but I want him to already learn that it's not necessary to interact with everyone. The other day my, my dad and stepmom were here and we asked them, will you be able to ignore him? No, probably not. So we put, put him upstairs and that's fine. We brought Venus downstairs and uh, they had fun with Venus and Venus is quite an easy dog in that aspect. She'll just relax after a bit. Um, Mojo isn't. If you make eye contact with her after being there for three hours, she will jump in your face and that's not polite behavior towards the person at all and it's not something I accept but it's also not something I want to be busy doing whilst having visitors over um, so that's why I take decisions like that now if you are a social butterfly and you do want to interact with other people and other dogs then I suggest getting a breed that is not as extreme as, as a Staffordshire Bull Terrier because I'm terribly sorry to say that they might develop dog aggression and you might not like it um, I would suggest a very different breed and maybe a Labrador Retriever sounds boring but they are awesome dogs if you get a field bred Labrad Labrador um, and they love people and they love dogs but I would suggest if you want to walk them to teach them that not everything has to be approached. There is a person here in the neighborhood who has a Retriever, I think it's a Golden Retriever and he often walks similar routes as I do and the dog cannot ignore my dogs and even at a huge distance, the dog will lie down and stare and the man once pulled the dog up by the collar and drag, drag it home. Um, the dog is not able to ignore anyone. And I, um, I, had an I made an assumption, I thought, well, he probably lets his dog interact with most things that the dog encounters. And that was true because I see him letting, him letting the dog run into gardens where there are dogs. I see him run up to every single dog that he meets if the person allows it. But there are many dogs that are fine, that are not easily overexcited like mine are. 
If your dog is, however, if you notice that your dog gets very frantic even after one situation, I would suggest keeping meet and greets to a certain spot, to keeping that with dogs that you know, people that you know well, uh, dogs that are vaccinated, do dogs that are healthy. There are so many reasons that I didn't even get into and that aren't my main reasons, but they can be reasons for others. Have a fixed situation, have a set situation, and then think about, okay, can I safely let my dog interact with this person, with this animal? Perfect, do it. But if it gets too much, stop. You can always be the boss in that situation. I simply wouldn't recommend saying hi to every single person and every single dog. And I know that this will be different for everyone, but I hope that I gave some insight into why we don't interact with everyone um, and why if you see us on the street, we might not let you say hi to our dogs. I'm very curious if your dogs are allowed to say hi to every dog, if they are allowed to say hi to every person. Um, I'm also curious to hear why or why not. Um, and I also know that this can be different for dogs who are um, rescued from the shelter or dogs who are um, bought responsibly somewhere. Um, the starting point is very different, um, but I think it's a nice starting point, no matter where the dog comes from, to let them know that every situation is fine, but you don't have to interact with anyone in that situation either. This is my reasoning and I hope that this was interesting to you and that you could um, either that you have a similar aspect, that you can understand why I do this. Um, but I also hope to find people that fully disagree and think that I could do it differently. Um, I thought I could with Mojo, but then I started to learn what Staffords are like and I realized that that's not the thing for me. I just don't want all of the attention from other people. I just want to walk and then this is perfect. Um, my dogs don't have dog friends, uh, but they have one another, and I think that is plenty for the, for the breed that they are. Um, but, by the way, what I do love is that my dogs are able to walk beside other dogs, side by side, bodies touching, without having to interact with them. Um, as you have seen in some of my videos before, I will link one up here. Um, we often go for hikes with Anke and her three Staffords, and they walk side by side without doing anything, even though two of them are dog aggressive. These have just gotten used to walking beside one another and she has the same training method and I think that is why it worked. One of her dogs was raised by her parents because it's her parents' dog and she worked on it for a couple of years to get that dog in line with this behavior uh, because he couldn't ignore others, but now he can um, and it's awesome to see. And I know that there are other people who do this. I know people who have the same uh, way of thinking. Um, most people that I know, of course, are Stafford owners. And if they are sporting Staffords, these dog dogs are just not pet friendly. Um, but um, I also know people who don't mind their dogs pulling the leash at all times. And that's fine. If you want to make every walk a workout and you want your dog to pull, then be my guest. Have it be interacting with people um, if that is what you're going for. I'm not. <laughs> I, I live in a busy area, I can't have my dogs pulling the street because it creates so many um, unnecessarily unsafe situations. So yeah, I'm not great at keeping things short as you can hear, but it's, um, it's, it's quite a passionate thing of mine. Um, it's also quite important to me, so that's why. Um, I hope you uh, liked listening to my ramble. Mojo is absolutely done, as am I, as you can hear from my voice, I um, don't feel too great. <laughs> so I will get back to resting. It's, uh, it's Sunday morning actually as I'm filming this, so I have to edit and export it, uh, and you'll see it tonight. Um, or later on, I don't care. <laughs> I hope that you like watching it though. And uh, yeah, have a great rest of your day, um, wherever you are. And we will see you next week, and I hope next week we will have a DIY spring pull video. Uh, something that has been requested a lot. Um, I'm showing you guys how to make a spring pull, how to use it, which types of things you can upgrade, and how to make it keep it budget, um, what you can switch out. You will see everything. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Goodbye.